Hi everyone and welcome to The Vintage Company. I recently made a video about the history of Post Grape Nuts, a cereal that was invented in 1897 and has remained almost exactly the same ever since. I'll link to that video here. And one of the things that kept coming up in my research were all the different recipes you could make with grape nuts. From grape nuts ice cream, to grape nuts pudding, to a variety of cookies, muffins, breads, and bars. Now, most modern grape nuts recipes I found were sweet dishes for breakfast or dessert. But this wasn't always the case. There are a surprising number of savory recipes for grape nuts from throughout the cereal's history, especially from the 1920s. I'm talking things like omelets, sandwiches, and salads. So today, we'll take a look at the origins of grape nuts recipes, including some of the more unusual ones. And I'll attempt to make one of the most popular grape nuts desserts, grape nuts pudding. People have been making all kinds of things with grape nuts almost since the cereal was introduced. A grape nuts ad from 1900 asserted, grape nuts can be made into a great many different and palatable dishes. Postum Cereal Company, the maker of grape nuts, was willing to pay a reasonable sum for new and desirable dishes, and urged ladies to experiment and send in their recipes. One of the first such recipes I was able to find was for a mock pumpkin pie, which substituted grape nuts for pumpkins. Now, why you would want to substitute the pumpkin, I couldn't tell you. Other early recipes included grape nuts pancakes, grape nuts ice cream, grape nuts salad, grape nuts cookies, grape nuts cheese casserole, grape nuts meatloaf, and grape nuts tomato soup. There were also quite a few grape nuts pudding recipes, but maybe not the exact kind you're thinking of if you've had grape nuts pudding before. We'll get into that later. In 1923, Postum Cereal Company and the Good Housekeeping Institute announced a nationwide contest for grape nuts recipes. Postum would buy 101 recipes or suggestions for new uses of grape nuts for $50 each, and Good Housekeeping Institute would award $2,500 for the four best recipes, $1,000 for first place, $750 for second, $500 for third, and $250 for fourth. Now this was some serious cash in 1923. $1,000 was about $15,000 in today's money. I'm not sure how many recipes they were expecting, but the contest attracted over 80,000 participants. The Good Housekeeping Institute certainly had their work cut out for them, but they ultimately selected Francis Lewis Trussell's Grape Nuts Omelette California recipe as the grand prize winner. Trussell's recipe added grape nuts, grated cheese, and tomatoes to a nearly set omelet before folding. Other top recipes were grape nuts raisin pie, grape nuts fruit cake, and grape nuts lunch sandwiches. The remaining top recipes were published in a book called 101 Prize Recipes. One of the most popular grape nuts recipes that has persisted to this day is grape nuts pudding. The recipe's name, much like grape nuts itself, is a little bit of a misnomer because it seems like grape nuts pudding is more like a custard. The earliest reference to grape nuts pudding I was able to find was from Postum Cereal Company itself who urged customers to have a grape nuts pudding recipe on the package in 1900. Now, without seeing the recipe, I can't say if this grape nuts pudding was a match for the custardy dessert known today. Certainly, this grape nuts ad from 1910, which states, no headache or tummy ache in puddings made of grape nuts, shows something that looks more like a pie, possibly with the grape nuts pudding as a filling. There's also a lot of variation in grape nuts pudding recipes, especially in the 1910s and 1920s. Some were made with fruit-flavored jello, others with eggs, some included lemon or orange rinds and juice, others featured raisin, and some were cooked over the stove while others were steamed in the oven. The 101 Prize Recipe Book features no fewer than nine different pudding recipes including Grape Nuts Puffed Pudding, Grape Nuts Queen Pudding, Grape Nuts Minute Tapioca Pudding, Grape Nuts Toasties Pudding, Spice Grape Nuts Pudding, Grape Nuts Chocolate Pudding, Suet Pudding with Grape Nuts, Grape Nuts Steamed Pudding, and Grape Nuts Delight Pudding, as well as a Grape Nuts Fruit Custard Recipe. By the 1920s, Grape Nut Pudding recipes had spread far and wide across the United States. But it seems to have had the strongest influence in the Northeast, where it was reportedly once on the menu of every diner. How and why grape nuts pudding became so entrenched in the Northeast is a mystery, but it makes sense for us today to follow a New England style recipe for this video. I'll be using New England Today magazine's old-fashioned grape nuts pudding recipe, which I'll link to below. 
Now, if you've seen my comparing the ingredients in Kellogg's Pop-Tart video, where I tried to make homemade Pop-Tarts on a stick, you'll know that cooking things is not my strong suit. But this recipe seems really straightforward, so as long as I don't accidentally make scrambled eggs instead of custard, I think I should be okay. The first step is to mix milk and grape nuts in a pot, bring to a simmer, and remove from heat to cool for at least 15 minutes. Then you beat egg, sugar, vanilla, and salt together. I wasn't sure from the recipe how long I should beat the egg mixture, so I just went until it became foamy and a lighter color. You then pour the cooled grape nuts and milk into the egg mixture, mixing together thoroughly. And if you're like me, this is when you make a mess. Once everything is combined, you pour it into a buttered 14 quart baking dish and top with nutmeg. The baking dish is then set into a roasting pan, which you pour water into, enough to reach about halfway up the sides of the baking dish. This creates a water bath. Now you were supposed to bake the pudding at 350 degrees for 50 to 60 minutes, or until it sets with a slight jiggle and a knife inserted into the center comes out clean. For me, it took about 20 minutes longer than the instructions recommended, but it did eventually set. I let it cool for 20 minutes and then topped the grape nuts pudding with whipped cream for the taste test. To be perfectly honest, my first impressions of grape nuts pudding was that it was just okay. I really liked the distinct layers it formed with the grape nuts sinking to the bottom to form a crust and the custard on top but it wasn't very sweet and it didn't really taste like a dessert. And at this point, I was wondering what I did wrong. Did I need another cup of sugar? Did I need to beat the eggs more? Should I have cooked it longer? So I put the pudding in the fridge and I went to bed thinking that I'd probably need to remake the recipe. But I decided to eat some for breakfast the next day and guess what? It was delicious. It tasted so much better cold and the flavors from the grape nuts really soaked into the custard overnight. Now, would I order this as a dessert, especially if it didn't have whipped cream on it? Probably not. I don't think it's sweet enough for me, but I've been eating it for breakfast all week. Have you had or made grape nuts pudding? What do you think of it? Any tips or suggestions for how to make it? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video about the history of grape nuts recipes. If you like this video and you want to learn more about the history of companies and their products, or if you'd like to see me try and bake other vintage recipes, please consider liking this video and subscribing to this channel. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time.